Let's talk about using video conferencing for teaching. If we're not careful in video conference teaching, we can occasionally become talking heads because we're not sure if students are paying attention or if they're engaged, and we're a little shyer to ask questions or to ask specific students to participate. Here are three suggestions to see if we can make this a little bit more meaningful for you and your students. Use video for like show and tell moments. This is my Macy and uh, we've had her for about a year and a half. Little Macy has a couple little t problems with her. She has a cleft palate and can't eat all the normal food that normal dogs can eat. So we have to take very good care of her and she's the cutest thing ever. Say hi Macy, hi Macy girl. Occasionally we can use, we can use Zoom for like show and tell moments. Highlight a student and let them show off what they're doing or what they got going on. Don't, don't make it just a classroom experience, make it a connection experience as well. You can come up with a million different ways to allow the spotlight to be on one student and always and not always have it be focused on like like gospel answers or, or testimony. Let them just show who they are. Remember, if you were to do a show and tell or something like that, you wouldn't want it to take the entire class. It's just a way to get one or two students involved. You could take turns. Imagine what could happen if you asked some of your students to come prepared to the video conferencing class with meaningful preparation in order to add to the discussion, not just participate, but actually take over the discussion. For example, let's think here for a second what we might do in Alma chapter 5. Alma chapter 5 is full of questions, really, really great questions, and you might identify five or six of those questions. And then, like in verse 26, the question is, if you have experienced a change of heart, and if you have felt to sing the song of redeeming love, I would ask, can you feel so now? Can you imagine yourself preparing a student to be able to meaningfully participate with Alma 526? You could reach out to them and simply ask them to prepare to answer this question. What do you do in order to consistently feel the change of heart that you have experienced? How do you stay close to that feeling as often as you can? Look at some of these questions in Alma chapter 5. You could come up with a way to prepare each of your students to respond to one of these questions in a more unique way. And all you would have to do is just go through and say, the next person is going to tell us what they think about verse 27. And the next person is going to tell us what they think about verse 28. And you've already prepared a discussion. And from those responses, you can ask other students to respond. Can you imagine what 15 or 20 minutes of preparation on your part would do for your students and the participation in class? Please give this a try. Now, my last and final suggestion you are going to hate. It means leaving your lesson plan completely and allowing your students to just discover some things together without a whole lot of planning. Let me show you what I mean. What if you were just to display these three powerful verses from Alma chapter 7 on the screen and simply ask your students to find some statements that stand out to them? and let them use their annotating marks to be able to mark some things and to circle some things and to let them be teenagers and to goof around and you can call them on that and say hey guys 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 take this serious come on um and if you need to you you can take rights away from certain students but they won't they'll, they'll, they'll participate they will behave then just ask some questions questions that you don't even have plans for you don't know what the questions are i don't know what the questions are but as you put Christ at the center of their learning, using his words, some really meaningful things can happen. Don't plan it. Just put it up there and allow them to make some discoveries and just lead a conversation using the skills and the personality that you already have. Of course, teaching on video conferencing is so different and you do have to call on students and you can't just ask a question and hope that someone responds. But with a little bit of planning and sometimes leaving your planning completely, you can have meaningful experiences using video conferencing. Give these three suggestions a try. Let me know how it goes. Thanks, sisters and brothers. We'll see you next time.